So um, again, thank everybody for joining us. Can you guys can you hear me? Still hear me? You can hear me, Danny. Okay, because I know you're not muted. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank everybody for joining us another Tuesday, just to receive another dose of encouragement and prayer. It is such, um, and I say it every Tuesday. It is such a praying time. We're praying. We say specifically for our sons, but just for our children and our families. We pray uh, for the Jacob Blake family uh, in Wisconsin, the young black man that was killed. Yeah. It was yesterday. So we pray for the Jacob Blake family and for the, just for the state of Wisconsin, all the citizens there. So just thank you guys for just, I mean, for just taking the time to even show your face or show your name to say this is important. It's important that we pray for our sons because we need we need some leaders. We need leaders that will um, just be good husbands and good fathers and good leaders in the church and good business owners. We we need it in our in our race in our community. So thank you. I'm going to open in prayer, and then after I pray, I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. Just I'm so glad to have Danny and um, his son will be joining us as well. Danny is, um, he's a son, so he's going to encourage us as brothers tonight. So I'll come back and I'll introduce Danny, and then we'll hear from Danny and his son, and then we'll have one of our, um, our spiritual moms to close us in prayer tonight. So just, um, again, thank you guys for joining us, and let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this um, another opportunity to come together and pray and just to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts god we're just so thankful for how you have blessed us and um in a lot of situations a lot of homes things are not the way that we think it ought to be god but we're just going to trust you we're going to say thank you god for just health and for strength and i'm um, thanking you for the the movement of, of our limbs and just the mind to to say thank you god for if it were not for you our we would uh, be selfish and we um, we're just thinking only of ourselves because you said the heart is deceitful. It's hard to understand the heart of man. But with your spirit, God, we're able to reach out and touch somebody else. We're able to stop and pause for a minute to pray for somebody else and to love on somebody else and to encourage someone else. So thank you, God. We don't take any credit for ourselves, but it's because of your spirit that we live and that we move and we have our being. It's because of your spirit that we can reach out and show extend mercy and extend grace. God, so thank you for um, the sons that you placed in our lives. We thank you. We're blessed. You said blessed is um, the one whose quiver is full of them. So we're just blessed for our one, our two, our three sons that you've given us. We thank you for um, them being good husbands. We thank you for them just having a good school year. We thank you for prosperous businesses and um, great fathers and leaders. We just thank you, God, for them having a great year in college. God, that they're that you they're looking to you, um, um, just during their entire life. God, that they they're desiring to walk in the spirit. They don't desire to walk in the flesh. That's our prayer. God, that the things of the world would become unattractive to them. So thank you, God. Thank you for listening to us as we pray. You said you lend your ear to us. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for um, just blessing us. Now bless our time together tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Yeah. If you guys can hear, um, I'm outside. If you can hear the nature, <laughs> so we'll, I get loud when I come outside. So um, again, I'm excited about having Danny and his son come and speak to us. Tonight, and, I, and I'll tell you in a few minutes why I'm just so excited. But let me just say a little bit about him, and then Danny will fill us in after anything that I leave out. He'll fill us in. So Danny is a son. He's a son. Um, he's a brother. He is a husband. He's a father. Danny's an educator in the Gifford County school system. He is a mentor. So Danny, thank you for touching um, young boys and students that come in your path, touching them in a positive way. Danny is a graduate of A&T State University. He's married to Tr Trinita. Trinita. Yes, um, that's right. <laughs> they, have, they, have four <laughs> they have three daughters and one son, and you'll hear from his son tonight as well. Um, his son is a twin, so just wanted to throw that mm -hmm. in. Um, the biggest reason why I just, uh, and I've told Danny this before, Danny has a huge heart. I told mm -hmm. him, 
um, you have a great big heart. And, and as they say, and I'm not sure if this, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. His mom has a big heart too, as well. Yes. And I think, and I'm sure he'll talk about that tonight, but he has a really big heart. And he's touched the, the lives of a lot of people. And I'll um, pause there and I'll let um, Danny just fill in anywhere, anything that I left out and then he'll do the same as well. Um, so thank you, Danny. And I'll turn it over to you and then we'll um, hear from you. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you, uh, y'all having me on, and uh, I just thank God for the opportunity to come and prayerfully say something that'll help somebody, uh, help a mother with their son. Um, pretty much, Lord covered it all. I grew up in Wake Forest. For those who don't know me, my mom is on here. Matter of fact, Mark, can you hear me? Can you wave if you can hear me? That's my mom, Melissa Godwin, right there. And like uh, Miss Lori said, I went to A and T where I eventually met my wife, and we have four. Lori thought my kids were small, but my kids are grown now pretty much. They're, you know, 23, 22, and the twins are 19. And like she said, one of them, uh, Jordan, is, you know, my son. Um, I thank God because um, I had been listening to the past two sessions, and I think it was Valerie and Trey. They spoke real good, and I remember she was talking about um, just having uh, about the trials and tribulations he went through being a young man, how he had to lean on God to trust him to fix his situation. That was really good. And then Jason last week talked about uh, mothers and sons having that connection, which is very, especially in these day and times, very important. And so uh, when Laura asked me to speak, first thing I asked her, I said, well, what you what you want me to speak on? And I'm hoping she's going to give me the, I set up the alley hoop, maybe she's going to give me the slam dunk, just tell me what to speak on. She was like, oh, well, no, just, uh, you know, just pray about it and be led by the Lord. I said, oh, man, wow. So, but that was kind of good, too, because it, it didn't put it on me, it put it on God. So, all week he's been giving me, like, I'll be cutting the grass and he'll give me a nugget. So, I'll put it in my phone. I'll be doing something else. So, you know, he gave me, hopefully, some encouraging words to say. And the, and the way I figure it is, like she said, I'm a son, uh, and my son is a son, of course, he has his mother. And so really, those are the two immediate things I can compare, you know, a mother-son relationship to, the one I have with my mom, and then I see the one that he's developed with his mom. So the one, you know, it was, it's very important, I, I would say, I don't know what the age group is as far as how young the sons go from here, maybe some you know, up in the mid in 20s and maybe some down, little boys, I don't know. But I know um, it was very important to have a foundation, a stability, um, even from, from birth, that uh, the mom is the first foundation that a child comes in contact with. I think it's very important to start off with that bond with your mom, even as a, a little kid. And, you know, my mom, she's up here, and I thank God for the relationship we have, even on today, because, you know, even back then, she did the best she could. And when she couldn't, she made sure that me and my sister didn't go without. And even as a young man, um, I, I saw real early the examples of uh, not, not having a good role model and having a good male role model. So I think it's very important that to begin with, that the mom establishes that foundation and that, you know, naturally she's a, a nurturing person anyway. And I'm, I'm, I'm going through my notes. And even, even in, if there's an absence of the father, it's important to establish that bond and instill in them the things of God early on. And I thank God because I always say, you know, even growing up in my family with my mom, you know, I was there as a youngster through the years when, you know, without God, but then I saw when, after she got saved, how things work with God in your life. So I think I was fortunate, y'all come on in to see, you know, even, even as a youngster, I knew then to surround myself with positive role models because I had seen, you know, too many people led astray young men my age or, young, or men older than me that I looked up to but I knew at a young age to surround myself, you know, I thank God because I grew up, you know, I grew up Friendship Chapel 
And early on, I could see the role models in my life, like Deacon Donald Moss and Deacon Barry Young, Reverend Holloway, all those men that God placed in my life at a young age. I thank God because even when my mom didn't know some things, she still surrounded me with people that would hold me accountable. I think that's one of the most important things, mothers, to your son. So if you can't be around them all the time, surround, make sure their team, the circle, is surrounded by people that's going to hold them accountable. That's not going to, um, that's not going to cause them to to do anything immoral, immoral, go astray. Somebody that's going to lead them back to the things of God. That's very important, especially in these times, these days right now, because moms can't be there all the time. Mom can't be there on the phone all the time. So you got to surround yourself even with just pray that God gives you a team, especially nowadays, that um, that will help mold these sons into the men we need them to be. Um, you know, Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, it will not depart from it. And that that is so true. That is so true. You know, my mom made sure that we was in church on Sunday. And I can I can pick what about even if she didn't go, she made sure we was on the Sunday school bus. But I thank God for that because it, it built the foundation that even when I got older and I guess, you know, quote unquote, went astray, I was led back to God at an early age. I thank God for that. Um, so, you know, one of my one of the nuggets I have now is mothers lead your sons toward God and the things of God and help them to find out what God's will is for their life, but not mama's will, but God's will. You know, a lot of times, uh, mom have a, a lot of, I'm just speaking in general, moms have a hard time letting go of their babies. But when you, when you put them in God's hand, you got to trust that that's going to be the way, the will of God for their life. So, you know, that would be another point of mine is to, you know, the song says, let go and let God. I know it's a song, it's very cliche, but it's so simple and so true. Um, it's very important that we, I, I think we've lost sight of the village mentality where, you know, back in the day, if I cut up down the street, then not only would the lady down the street get me, but then on the way home, your auntie would get you, then your grandma, then your mama would get you. You know, um, I think if we have, we especially need that for our black men, like I said before, to hold them accountable for their actions, but correct them in love and not in, in you know, and point them to the right direction. That's one thing I admire about my wife, that she always corrects in love, even with our kids. Um, she always corrects them in love. She'll, you know, she'll point out where they went astray and, and lead them back you know, especially with her and Jordan, lead them back to the right path, but she does it in love. You know, we can't, mom's got to um, be be sure not you're, that you're not correct and out of flesh and out of anger and out of resentment because that's going to instill in them, the, that's going to stir up wrath in them. And, you know, I know in the Bible says we're not to stir up wrath in our children. So I thank God at a, at a young age, um, I saw that. Now, my mom raised us with an, with an iron fist, and I, and I really appreciate that. She didn't play. To this day, she don't play. But she loved us dearly and still loved us to this day. You know, and I knew it was coming from a place of love, pretty much her, you know, raising us as a single mom. So I know some, some way she, uh, she had to come hard sometimes. And a lot of sons, a lot of sons struggle with, how can I put it? Where like their mom is correcting them, especially when they're of age, when they're, you know, 15, 16, hey, mom, I'm kind of, kind of feeling myself now. You can't, don't, don't talk to me like that. And they feel like, uh, especially when you're coming to, uh, becoming a young man, that there's a, a lack of respect. But what, it, I don't think that's the case at all. I just think that in this day and time, you know, moms have to be tough, especially if there's a dad not around. Moms have to be double tough to keep our son safe and, and headed in the right path. So I thank God for how our mom, you know, how she brought me up. And, you know, it, I was 
we had always have a connection. We love to cut up, and that's our thing. We cut up, we laugh, we love to joke. That's where I get my funny side from. I know it's from my mom and her family. But um, I thank God because even on today, you know, she's one of my closest friends. I can call her, talk to her about anything. But that was established a long time ago. You see what I'm saying? We did. I didn't. We didn't wait until the later years to try to establish that. So I think that connection off top is very important um, to establish that with your sons. And 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 Jason made a good point last week. So I think somebody asked a question like, um, "Well, what if you don't have any any interest, or what if my son's interest is not my interest?" Well, baby, you gotta you gotta now we gotta fight today nowadays we have to fight for our sons so it's going to cause for some uncomfort you may have to come out of your comfort zone just to get a connection you know with your child just to establish uh, a connection with your child because we don't want to lose them to the streets we don't want to lose them to the devil you know um so i think that's very very important um and i think a lot of moms they they you know, some, especially nowadays, they, they need help, but some are ashamed to ask for it. Or some feel uh, like, you know, the old mentality, what happens in my house stays in my house. Well, in my opinion, that's a, that's a thing of the past. That I don't, you know, we don't go by that here because if I, if I see where I could get help from somebody else who has a son, that uh, is struggling in the area, but they overcame it through God's help, then I need to seek out, or the moms need to seek out that person. It's, it takes village now more than ever. Now more than ever, especially with them, you know, our son's getting killed. There's no other way to put it. Our son's getting killed and murdered just for being black sons. We have to have that covering from God. We have to have that foundation of family. We have to have that village mentality you know, to look out for each other's children. When you see them out somewhere doing something they're supposed to do, you know, correct them. Correct them in love, but correct them. Otherwise, what what kind of parents are we if we see a child going towards the street and a semi-truck is coming down the road and we don't pull them back? You know, we're just as guilty for not saying anything. But Establishing that foundation is, is very, very important. Um, my wife and my, and my son have joined me now. They're right here beside me. And I'm going to, in a few minutes, let them speak on how their relationship uh, has blossomed. And I've seen it with my own eyes. And that's why I wanted, uh, especially Jordan, to speak on that. But um, I just come to be uh, an encouragement that all, host, all hope is not lost. I know it may seem like it. I don't know anybody's personal situation. I maybe know five or six people up here, but I do know the power of the God I serve. You know, thank God I, I don't have the testimony that our son gave us a lot of trouble or any trouble at all. Uh, Jordan's always been mild-mannered, well-mannered. He's always kept to himself. He never was a follower. He's always been a leader. He and now and, and it's funny because for years he was he played the drums in church, but now God took us through a transition where we st we started our own ministry and he he doesn't play the drums anymore. But God has put a gift of speaking the word in him, where he's speaking the word more and more and more every day. And we know for a fact if we would have let's just say, uh, stay where we were, that gift wouldn't have developed. But so we thank God for, you know, the young man he has become, and a lot of it, you know, is credited to the relationship he's built with, with his mom. Now, I can talk, but my wife, is she, she's a talker. She's a, she's a preacher. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's you. And oh, so, God. but I've seen through the years, I've seen through the years, the connection she's had with him and even other young men. Um, my nephew, for example, my nephew was 10 years old and he's, he's going through a stage where, you know, his, his mom recently got saved, but his father 
was pretty much in the streets. And so he's around him a lot. He sees a lot of that negative influence. So it's taken all of us. His mom comes in, she's frustrated. She sometimes she throws her hands up and she's, uh, you know, she's just sometimes powerless when it comes to dealing with him. And so she'll, you know, bring him to us. Well, we have no problem with him because from day one, we established, you know, our rules and regulations for him. But the thing I, the, my point with that is, there's a number of young men here that help. I don't do it by myself. My son don't do it by himself. My daughter's friends, they help out. It takes all of us to keep him accountable and on the right track. Tristan, you do your homework. Have you, uh, you, you, you stop using this word? Are you, are you obeying your mom? Are you listening to grandma? We stay on him all the time, all the time. And so, like, I, like my original point, um, you know, and it's, it's important that we show that unconditional love, moms, to their sons. Well, the streets throw them away, but they know they always got mom to come back to. Where, you know, the world throws them away, but they know they can call on mom. And mom's going to give them that unconditional love. Um, like I was saying before, as moms, you don't want to provoke rage or make them feel less than a man is what I was trying to say when they become of age. That'll push them away and cause them, watch this now, it'll cause them to start to rule their own families the same way with an iron fist. That's not the way to do it. But if they have resentment in their heart from, you know, all these years, my mom was fussing at me and yelling and, and, and cussing at me and when they get married, guess what? They're not going to want to hear that from a wife. Even if she's speaking wisdom. Thank God mine does. I got a wise, wise wife. <laughs> but we don't want to put that in them early because then that's going to trickle to their own families. And that's going to, I'm telling you, that's going to lead to, you know, destruction. That's what it leads to. So we got to be careful how we correct them. We can't correct out of anger. We can't correct out of rage. We can't make them feel uh, less than a man, especially when they're, uh, you know, becoming of their age, 17, 18. There's ways to correct them in love and not tear them down. Um, another point that God gave me was to keep, our son, keep your son's goal oriented. Um, the Bible says an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So in other words, the more their time is occupied, the less trouble. I used to I used to wonder why, uh, you know, so many people started their kids off in sports early. But now, having a child of our own, I understand. Even though Jordan didn't go to sports route, God took him the, the uh, band route. He played in the band all years in high school. So he had to be at practices. And out of town, they go to Atlanta, Tennessee. Um, but he had goals and those goals kept him out of trouble. Now, it's not going to do it 100%, but at least we can decrease the chances, you know, of what they get into by keeping them occupied. So that's, that's a very, very important thing. But I'm going um, to let Jordan speak a little bit on the development that, you know, between him and my wife, but only he can speak on that. So this is... Jordan, you got to say, are y'all oh, Hi, starting? everybody. <laughs> yeah, I hear them. Can they see you? Yeah, they can see you right there. Oh, okay. Okay. Can they hear you? Yeah. Right I can hear them. Yeah. Hey, Jordan. Lisa. Oh. Got them. You yeah, say hey, right? speak, Make sure you speak up. They can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm being nosy. I'm <laughs> just seeing who all are here. Introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm Jordan. I'm, I'm, uh, this is my parents. And, you know, I'm who he was talking about for. <laughs> <laughs> for the half, I don't know how long, but um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I can't really, I can't really say everything off top, but I can um, I can say that it de I I definitely noticed that me and her relationship changed over the years. Like when I was a kid, like I don't know if she knows or not, but I I was I, I was my dad was kind of like my I wouldn't say favorite, but I was always kind of like drawn to him, <laughs> right? Mainly because we shared, like, you know, maybe whether it was wrestling or was hung out or whatever, and like <laughs> some and and 
thank God that my mom has made it to the place that she is today because, you know, back then it was, I always kind of saw her as like, kind of like a little, a little rough, like angry. You know how regular moms do that, you know, they yell about <laughs> every single thing. Like uh, <laughs> everybody was sleeping and then this chair was still in the bathroom. She told somebody to get the chair right. <laughs> Everybody sleep middle of the night. She waking back to wake up the whole house. Somebody get in here. Get out there to get this chair. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. So that's for. And then she asked one one day on the way back from church. She asked me. She was like, why don't you have any good memories of me? And it mm -hmm. took me whether it was a year or or some way. It took me a little bit of time to really think. And then recently, I came up with the answer that I I really didn't have any much good memories not that she was a terrible mom she was a good mom she gave us wisdom but you know just because you have all the wisdom in the world don't mean you're the perfect parent honestly so mm -hmm. so me i i just it it, it was kind of like when we when we go places with mama we was like oh man we, we already know how this about to be or something <laughs> like that we, she about to talk our heads off and all that. <laughs> she about to, lecture. She about to, yeah, <laughs> lectures. I, like, but um, but the more I started like developing myself and God, I started like really appreciating those lectures because me getting to that age to where that was gonna be needed the most, I I kind of started understanding more of what she was saying, and so um. Like I started, I started getting closer to God. I started developing my own relationship. And you know, just kind of like, like backing up from my mom a little bit, you know, is yeah. So I was just letting God work on my mom and God work on me too. And then I don't even know when I started this, but now every morning I just come up and hug her. <laughs> I just come see what she doing. Most likely when I ain't doing that, so I yeah. And we actually share a a connection. It's like you'd be surprised the type of connection that your children will share with you when you're like when you're open to hear them and, and sometimes I, I sometimes your kids need like a friend and a parent a lot of times they they just think i just i, I have to be the parent, parent 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 all the time like but some kids actually need a friend and a parent i i know y'all Y'all be saying, I ain't your little friends off the street. I, 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 that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But they need they need that that fun connection. Like, I, I did not know that me and my mom shared, like, we love watching superheroes. Yes. Like, every time a Marvel movie comes out, she's the first person I contact. We buy two tickets and we go see the movie. My dad just falls asleep all the time. Like, <laughs> Wow, <laughs> she's, she's still gonna see it though. Like she's the one, like she's one of the people that I can talk to about stuff like the Avengers and Iron Man and Captain America. And if I have a question about the Bible, or if I have a question about God, I can come to her because I I know that she'll have the answer. Because she, everything that I know about God, or most of my religious life, really came from her. Honestly, like she was, she was there when I first, like when I was little, we was on Down and Ridge, and I think I had a bad dream, and so I went to my mom's room, and I was like, "Mama, uh, can we pray?" I was like five, six. I was like, "Mama, can we pray?" And she was, and then um, she prayed right, and then I think she told me say. You know how they do when, like, when they first get saved, like, I accept Christ and, and, and you know, all that good stuff. I, that was the first time I ever, like, I think that was when I first got saved at, like, five. <laughs> and my mama was there. She was like, <gasps> see? <laughs> she was like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, now God is in your heart. And mm. ever, ever since then, I had a connection with God. And, you know, I may have. I, I may have like stumbled a little bit, but right. you know, the Bible says you you you'll stumble, but you shouldn't fall. Come on, oh, come on, preacher. <laughs> so everything I know about God, it, it really came from her. And then the older I got, like I started experiencing on my own, 
And I started kind of like learning things for myself. And now I read the Bible on my own. I have my own relationship with God. And you know, the root has actually helped me get to that point because I learned I, I learned I learned a lot more in a week in the root <laughs> than than I have did my whole life, honestly. And I'm I'm just appreciative of where we are now. And 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 I think a lot of times when when kids become teenagers, that's like like my dad said, it's it's almost like when you see your child like they they're at the point of being grown and that like they're about to get like they're trying to get their own house, their own car. It's almost like the parents is is honestly the parents are not ready to, to see that kids grown yet. But my parents have they they've grown a lot from that. Most of you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like at first my parents kinda went through that stage. They they didn't go through it as bad as as it could have been, but they, you know, they've learned, they, they learned to accept that they're almost at that stage. And, and you know, and I, I, um, I say it like this, if you, if you literally take away a lot of the things that your kids like can do, like if you like keep them in a good place, right. So, so they don't do bad. And so they don't go the wrong direction. But if you choke them, that, that's what's going to draw them away. It's like almost being kidnapped and tied up. You know, like if you're tied up really, really tight, the rope's got your arms, the rope's got your legs, and you, you just can't move. Like the rope's are literally choking you. And the more it's choking you, the more you move and the more you try to get free. Mm. That's what happens when parents literally choke their kids. Like they, you, you, you can't do this, can't do that, can't do that, don't do that. Don't, like, that not allowing your your kids to to breathe. Not see my parents, they told us right from wrong, but they also gave us that room to because some some mistakes that some mistakes all parents can't really keep you from. They can only be there to help you through the experience. So when you when you choke your kids, that they're, they're trying to like this is how they try to get away because when you when you choke them, they're, they're trying to get free. So this is how a lot of strict, strict parents draw their children away. But if you give your kids that room to breathe, then they can move. And then it's almost like when you when you're a little baby, you you can try to protect your kids from you can try to protect your kids from from you can say don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove. But at the end of the day, you're telling them not to do it, but they don't really know truly why they shouldn't do it. They just not doing it because you said. But if they touch the stove and they burn themselves, ah, they not gonna do it again. They gonna look at it like them you ain't gotta say nothing. You they gonna see the stove, they're gonna be like, no, nah, I don't I don't want to get burned again. And this is how a lot of kids learn through experiences. Now I understand you don't want the kids to experience what you experience, but I say it, experience is where you learn the best honestly and but um yeah that's all i got to say <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't mean to preach to y'all no I, I, I told y'all uh, hey he's a preacher i mean we but, uh, have church service. <laughs> i'm gonna let my wife have a few words to say hey guys <laughs> I, um <laughs> um i guess the biggest, the biggest thing that I mean, if I could contribute anything, you all are grown, you have children, you know, you know, I don't know what their ages are, or what have you, but um, the what I would say to contribute to what my son and my husband were saying in reference to my son's relationship mm -hmm. and my relationship is, you know, in the beginning, um, when I was coming, when when he was coming up, when my kids were coming up at a, as a small age. My biggest thing was I was frustrated. I was frustrated by so many things. It's like I was easily frustrated. And so that's what my son remembers is the times when I was the most frustrated. And, um, and it's ironic because I thank God that I was able to see my son's memories or thoughts of me while he was still young. Because... Um, if I had just continued in the way that I was and God not work on me or what have you, 
he would have been a grown man feeling these, these, this way, having these thoughts about me. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I can say about myself, and, I, and I'm talking about myself, is that I've always been the type of person, and anybody knows me, to work on me. I've always worked on me, tried to be the best me I could be, and I did that through Christ, um, very Christ-centered. So what I've come to learn is by being Christ-centered, constantly trying to be the best me I could be for Christ, according to the word of God, allowing him to do what he wanted to do with me, as I did that, that's how I was able to see how my family would see me. I could see... I could see them looking at me, just the way they would look at me caught my attention and it caused me to look at myself even deeper. And so one day I asked my son, I said, Jordan, I said, why? It seemed like every time he would tell a story, this, this is why I was younger. Um, and it seemed like every time he would tell a story, we'd be talking about memories, whatever. It seemed like all his memories was negative. And I was like, oh, do you remember anything positive? You know, and but what it did was it caused me to search myself. And by it causing me to search myself deeper and, and to go to God and, and, and then it started causing me to notice my family's reactions when I would say things and do things. And so I started working on me. And as I worked on me, um, according to the word of God and just in a way to pleasing to God, as as possible not thinking i a man thinks he's right in his own mind so not the way out according to what i think of myself but uh, always judging myself and weighing myself according to the word of god by by doing that it caused my family to change i mean not just my son it caused my whole family to change because at one time i felt like i was the enemy of my family and I felt like the outsider, but it literally caused a change, even in my daughters, as they go through that phase with the girls, you know how that is, the moms and the daughters, but the relationships that I've developed with my kids now is beautiful. My husband is beautiful, and it's all because I've been Christ-centered, um, transparent, see myself. Even as I was working on myself, I was transparent to my kids, to my husband. You know what? I didn't mean to yell. I'm working on that. I mean, that's how I talk. You know what? I'm working on that. You don't deserve that. And one of the things that I've taught my children is, um, I don't care how old you are, you deserve respect. You deserve respect from your parents, and you deserve respect from anybody in the street. How can I expect them to expect respect if I don't show them respect? So it started with me. So if I, or if I owe you respect, anybody else owes you respect. I was talking to my daughter the other day and I was saying, you know how people say respect is earned? No, respect is deserved. I had to really think about that thing. It's not earned, it's deserved. We all deserve respect. And so by changing my mindset and the way I dealt with my kids, knowing they deserve respect, I started to receive respect back. I started to receive respect back and then realizing that one, they don't belong to me. They're gifts from God and that they're going to eventually be on their own. So everything that I said to them and taught to them, my son, it was to prepare them to be able to stand on their own two feet. Um, how to be, how to survive in a cruel world, how to think for yourself. And so with my son, specifically well with all my kids but my son you know i taught him how to think when you make a mistake what did you do wrong what could you have done different what are you going to do next time and that was that's the way we communicated and you had to answer those questions so now they know how to think and sometimes my daughters try to outthink me and i get that because that's the phase that they're in but they're entitled to their thoughts and they're entitled to their opinions and I respect you and you respect me. You know, if they come off wrong, you know, did you mean to say that? Because I'm feeling a little disrespectful, respect it. And so now that gives them, the, and I give them the opportunity to self-correct. So basically it's just about a respect thing. But it, the only reason in the way that I've had been able to have the strength to do that is because, I, is, is because I've been Christ-centered. 
And I don't, I don't think just because I'm the parent, I know everything. I don't think I'm right all the time because I sometimes don't, I, for the most part, I don't trust my own judgment. Everything I do, every thought that I have, I weigh it according to the word of God. And I just developed such a relationship with God that I, it's just a flow now. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, not what you say so I, I lived the life in front of my kids and um again i'm transparent with them and um i give them opportunities to have an opinion and i treat them like adults even when they was younger i still again the biggest thing has been a respect thing um if if they did something that you know was disrespectful instead of screaming and yelling and i'm talking about now, I, you know, I, I used to be a yell and a screamer, but that's the way it was when I came up in my house. Right. My mom and my dad screamed. But see, as I grew in Christ, God started showing me me. And so at a, my son's memories of me was when he was younger. But as he, once he became, you know, preteen, I had already started working on me at that point. So um, God started showing me, the more he shows me and me, the more I work on me then if I work on me, then I would tell my children, if I'm going to work on me, I need you to work on you. And so by me working on me and then working on me, we give each other room to make mistakes. And we discussed this thing. We talked about this thing. If I, if I hurt your feelings, we talked about this because ultimately I tell my kids, you know what, because I love you, my intentions is not to hurt you. You can trust me. I, I, I want to know, you know, I'm your biggest fan, you know, so I just ultimately create that kind of relationship mutual. And it, I've gained, had the most gain through my girls, which was the hardest. And, and now with my son, my words, is, he's like a sponge. And, you know, so now when he comes, to, like one time he, was, he had questions about um, girls before he had his girlfriend. And I started talking and he said, Mom, wait a minute. And he ran downstairs and he came back. He had a notepad and a pencil in his hand, <laughs> and he was taking notes. And my girlfriend said, how did you get him to do that? And, and you know, and ultimately it was, I can't explain to you enough, and I think that's what my son was trying to say. Our relationship grew because we literally respect each other now. Good. We literally respect each yeah, other now. Uh, what were we saying? I'm good. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. So yeah, I'm that's uh, Lori. I, I think I'm doing good on time. It's about eight forty-four. So, but that's uh, that's you know that's my my wife and my son. I love them both dearly, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of where I've seen their relationship go and where it is today. Yeah, you should be proud. So, so thank you uh, to the Ghost and family. Thank you guys hey. for coming. Yeah, great job. And I was going to tell. I was going to pause for a minute and give um, see if anybody has any questions or comments. Jordan is 19, right, Danny, 19. You just turned 19. Yeah, so Jordan is 19. Very good. In the comment section, um, there are some comments that says Jordan did a good job, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to say to um, all the mothers on the phone, whenever I'm always encouraging them to invite their sons, invite their family to listen in, because that's some, some good advice for our boys, for our young boys, even for the older ones. So thank you for your comments. Any, any, anybody else? If you, can, if you want to unmute yourself and comment so question the ghost and family. Hey. Hey. How's everybody doing? Hey. Uh, <laughs> I'm just so proud of y'all, but Trinita, I just want to thank you because I'm in here with Eliza and you said a mouthful for him. Aww. You know, about being, uh, about the respect card and how we earned it. You know, because, um, I always tell him this, that he's the thorn in my side, mm -hmm. and um, we're going to work on it. And I like the part about you said um, you're going to work on respecting me and him respecting and me respecting him. Mm -hmm. That was good. I, I, I'm going to use that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. I'm done. I'm done with that. Thank you. If I could if I could share one more thing, one of the things I, I have to admit I do is I speak life into my kids. I speak life into my kids. Power life uh power.
Wow. On acting out what you say to them, who you call them to be. If you say they're dumb or stupid, they're going to start believing that and they will start acting it out. But no matter, even I used to tell my oldest son, I said, you're trying to make me think that you, you, you don't know or, or, you know, that you, that you ignorant or whatever or what have you. I said, but I refuse to. You might be trying to make me think that. I said, but I refuse to believe that. I know that you're smart. I know that I would speak it. I would turn around and speak life into him. And I do that with all my kids. So that's a powerful thing. That even if you're your child, you see a trait or see something in your kid, whatever it is opposite, you speak it and you do it with the authority that you have that God has placed in your hands as a parent. And you speak life into your child. I don't care what kind of troubles they have. They're struggling in school. Baby, you smart. You can work that, 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 uh, that video game and you put the same energy into your work. You can do this. You know, just speak life. Speak strength and encourage because the world, they, the world going to tear them down on up. But if you put enough love and enough strength and enough encouragement in them, tell them that they're more, God is bigger than more than the whole world against them. Because I'm going to be honest with you. If I had not taught my children to seek God for themselves, I said, because my God is not personal, may not be personal to you. I said, until you learn God for yourself, yes, yeah, say the God that my mom served. I said, but until then, you go and you introduce yourself to God. You talk to him. You seek him for yourself. And when he starts responding, develop a acting crazy or talking mean or doing this and that and that, you talk to God in the classroom. So one of the biggest things is them knowing him for themselves. Amen. That, that's a great point. Yeah. You said they need to go and introduce themselves to God. That's, I was already thinking, you know, Danny really challenged the mothers. I was thinking we, we have our work cut out for us. I mean, it's just another reminder when Danny said we got to lead them towards God. I mean, we let our light shine before our sons. I mean, we, we got to do more than just praying for them. We got to put them, you know, as Trinita was saying, speak life. We got to speak life. We have a, I mean, it's a huge role as a mother. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a responsibility and it's a, it's a, um, what word am I looking for? It's a privilege, but it's also a huge responsibility. Any, any other comments or um, questions? I don't, have a, I don't have a question. Single mom, I've been a single mom before, but if you're a single mom, be very careful who you allow into to their lives and around them, as my husband was saying. Who are you dating? Who, you know, if you're dating, be very, I mean, look at them from a, tra from a real transparent situation, not who you. I think you guys are breaking up. Um, the example. Mm -hmm. You guys are breaking up. Ann, did you have a comment? Yeah, I had a comment. Um, I just, I, first of all, I just have to come, uh, come in the family, the ghost of family <clears throat> for doing an outstanding job, but when I was listening, I was saying how the roles were kind of flipped because most of the time when it comes to the son, most of the time they cling more to mama in the, the younger years, the early stages mm -hmm. as they're growing up. But I just admire so much of how Danny and Jordan was had that bond early on. And so then I, I just salute you um, for a job well done. And Mama Lisa, I, I salute you as well um, for that strong foundation of um, teaching, you know, teaching uh, Danny and, uh, and and leading him early on. And like Danny said, even though you weren't on that big green bus, you said Danny <laughs> in friendship. So I, I just thank God for that. And y'all did a exceptional job. And I follow Danny on uh, Facebook a lot of times, and his family loves to have fun. They know how to have fun. And so I, I love how you are always um, encouraging Mama and the mom, Danny, and I'm, so now, I'm not, I'm not going to call your name because I mess it up. It's still, <laughs> but, uh, how you all are just setting the example for uh, your, 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 your young men and your young daughters. And I, I just love also how uh, the statement was made that, you know, Jordan said, and Jordan, you did an outstanding job. A young man at the age of 19 and 
don't tell me we can't learn some wisdom for young people. But Jordan made a comment mm -hmm. that there are gonna just gonna be some mistakes that we're not gonna, um, as parents, keep you from making. But when mm -hmm. you make the mistake, just be there to lead you through the mis uh, mistake, right. guide mm -hmm. you through that mistake. So I, I thank you for just sharing, and you all, the whole um, ghost of family. You did an outstanding, outstanding job. So to God be the glory. Amen. Anybody else? Hey, Lori. Hey. Uh, I agree with Miss Ann. Uh, Jordan, you, I, I have notes of, you know, some things that you said. But one thing that stood out to me that I'm going to grab hold to and I'm going to take it into my relationship with my 10 year old son and that is don't choke your son don't choke your kids allow oh, them yeah. to breathe because i know me as a parent i you know i want to hover over my son and when jordan was saying it i felt like okay you know because he said sometimes mom i got it i got it but as a parent i want to make sure you have it <laughs> because I'm there. And when right. Jordan said that, it's just like, wow, I am really choking him. I'm not allowing him to do it and make the mistake and learn from his mistake. So like Miss Ann said, we can learn from our young people. So thank you, Jordan, for, for being transparent and allowing God to use you tonight to speak into us as mothers and as fathers um, of our sons, so that was that was trans that was life given to me. So thank you. Uh, you Dan, Jordan was very vivid when he talked when he described being choked. It was very <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Hi there. No, this is. Anyway, um, um, David, Sinead, and, and Jordan, I um, really enjoyed the message. And um, like the lady just said, at the age of 19, I learned a lot from him tonight. I wish my son could have been here to hear it, even at his older, in his older age, where, you know, he could have learned from this young man. And, um... I just enjoyed the whole the whole session, and thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Is, is, is Mel still up here? Because I know she had a, a specific question last. Uh, she asked me last week. Mel, are you up here? Yes. Hey, Danny. I'm Trinita and Jordan. Um, last week I was asking Danny after our last call. Um, I know that Danny has done, some, as well as um, his mother, has done some fostering and adoption and mentoring. And I um, wanted to he hear from him as far as parenting someone else's child or instilling nuggets of, of faith and um, Christian values and how you can go about doing that, even when um, the child is not your biological child. I think we... Um, as mothers have influence on our friends, our children's friends and people that we teach. And um, just because, as um, Danny said earlier, we have that nurturing um, ability. But just wanted to hear from him as far as the father concept of parenting a child that may not directly be your child, whether it's step parent, foster parent, mentor, however um, that relationship is. Okay, you, know, you was you was going in and out a little bit, but I think the gist of the question was like foster kids, and um, I mean God just let them. And now we start out, God just dropped them in our lap pretty much. But I guess I think her question was, if you're raising your children to come up to be Christ-like, and say your children's friends comes around, um, and maybe they're not. Uh, of the of the minister to them, or do you treat them differently, or is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think your, then your um your phone your connection. I'm going out. 
Yeah, yeah, because we we understood now. She was. I'm just talking about your experience as a false, your and Trinita's um, experience as foster parents, being able to, um, as your mom said last night, spread that love around, being an example for somebody other than your biological children. Okay, so um, the two foster children that we had when we got married, I actually had them previously before I met Danny. Um, I was um, pretty much a single mom raising seven children. So by the time Danny and I got married, the two foster children, the social social services called me back and said that um, they called me back and said that these two children needed placement again. And they called me back and said, hold on one second, sweetie. Okay, can you hear me? You hear me now? There's an echo. Really bad. He's turning it off. Alright. Okay, so um turn it off. Leave the meeting, I think it'll kick me out. Oh, yeah. Yep, I think it did kick him out. <laughs> is he gone? I think he is gone. She needs to unmute because she's okay. There, there she is. There she is. She's muted on the phone. We can hit. Mm -hmm. No, hit, hit your unmute button. I think every time I hit it, she is. Right. I, I unmute. Okay. All right. Am I unmuted now? You are. We can hear you. Okay. Um, like I said, I had, I had the seven children before I met Danny. I had my nieces and nephews and the two foster children. So when we got married, they needed placement again and social services called. And, you know, once I really explained to Danny, you know, that I had had these children before and we kind of got on the same page, they came to live with us. And so the biggest thing at that particular point, I didn't even think about it, but it's, it's a good question to wonder about me having foster kids in my home along with my regular kids well one of the things that i needed to establish with all of the kids is that um i love you all i love you all the same um i, I talked to my children and i shared with them i said well these babies need our help so i made it an hour thing they need our help they don't have their moms and their dads like you do and we have an opportunity to not only show the Christ in us, but to show them Christ um, in a way that would bless them so that, you know, basically we can help them. So instead of just bringing these kids into my home and now all of a sudden you have, you know, you just got to get over it. I, I really explained to my kids how from a ministerial point of view, we can help them. We can be a blessing to them which helped them to be more open to those kids coming into our home. But then with the kids, I shared with them, I said, well, right now, and I said this even with my sister, uh, same type of situation. I said, so kind of look at mom and dad, like kind of like being sick a little bit. Like I said, if you wouldn't blame them if they were sick with, you know, um, with something that they couldn't help. I said, they was like, no. I said, so if you look at mom and dad, like maybe they're sick, because if they were in their right minds, you know, no parent in their right mind would just abandon their children. So I say, kind of look at it like they're sick and until they get better, you get to come and live with us and we're gonna give you a loving family environment. We're gonna have fun, da 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 da. So that's kind of how I meshed the two families together. And then I created, like my husband said, a family unit to where each one teach one, each one or each one. So the way I kept the argument and the fighting down is I pretty much told him, I said, you teach, you teach me how to treat you. You teach her how to treat you. How you treat her, you teaching her or him how to treat you. And so that was especially um, helpful when the big ones to the little ones. So I said, how you talk to them, you're teaching them how to treat you. So 
again, goes back to that respect thing again. You know, I taught respect at an early age. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That's probably, even, even if I, when I was, when God was working on me with the frustration thing, and I wasn't frustrated all the time. I mean, I was a typical mom, to be honest with you. You know, I told you to do something, you didn't do it. All right, such and such. So, um, but I was able to ease up when God gave me another way. So the respect thing, not only did I teach my kids, but I also taught the foster kids. And so, um, you have to, you want to, that's pretty much it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's. I mean, that, that's pretty much it. And, um, okay. and, and, okay. and I mean, the same, same, the same, the same concept, same, you know, and... you guys are on mute again. <laughs> My four children and all of their boyfriend, girlfriends, and fiancés. It's about 16 of us in all and one of my best friends. So it's a, our ministry is about 16 people, and they all come in, and we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, making it, and that's like an ongoing thing. We're constantly working on ourselves. We're constantly working on ourselves. We're constantly talking about respect, and all of it coming from a biblical background. So, I mean, that, I mean, again, that's just kind of the root of where we at, which is what our ministry is called, by the way, the root. <laughs> I think we got a time Okay. Thank you, um, Ghost and Family, again. And I, and I know everybody agrees with me to say thank you. You guys did a great job. As thank you all for having us. Yeah, you, you are definitely welcome. Hopefully it won't be the last time. But as, as Nisha was saying, she had a, a page full of notes, and so do I. So we're going to, it's a good uh, transition. We're going to close in prayer and we're going to, Trishonda Robertson from um, Rocky Mount, Nash County area is going to close us in prayer. And I call her our spiritual, one of our spiritual moms. So it's just a great transition to uh, transition to Trishonda who, when Melanie was asking a question, she was saying, you know, stepmoms, foster moms, spiritual moms, where you have enough love to go around to not just your biological children, but you can um, spread it out. So Trishonda, however you want to close us out in prayer, you can um, do that. Um, I, am, I am thankful for this opportunity to come and pray. And um, thank you to the Ghostons, I think I said it right, for, right. for your, for what you there. I mean, that was amazing. And I took so many notes too. And the what you just ended on was a perfect segue, uh, because oh. when because when Miss Lori asked me about coming to pray on this call, one of the things I have learned in this season is not to question God when He asks me to do something, right? Because He gonna ask me to do He gonna ask all of us to do something that just don't make sense, right? And so. <laughs> You know, we just do stuff and we just we just do it because God gonna ask us to do something that don't make sense. And so when she asked me to pray, I was like, on your call for mothers and sons, and I'm not a mother. Um, and also she did not know that I had just went to the doctor. She called, she texted me on, on that Wednesday, on last Wednesday. And I had just went to the doctor on Monday, and the doctor had basically, you know, said to me. You know, basically, you're at an age, basically, you not to look at, don't even look at motherhood. That's basically what he said to me. And so mm -hmm. I didn't even, I just was at peace with whatever he said, because I was like, you're not God, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's okay, you're not God, but I'm, I'm at peace with whatever you said. Um, and so she had no idea of the conversation that me and, me and the doctor had had. Um, and I just thought about earlier this year when we did the preaching of the seven last words at church. And I was clear with God of what scripture that I did not want to preach, which was, um, you know, mother behold your, behold your son. And that's the exact scripture that wow. he gave me. And so I am thankful to be on this call tonight. And God was clear um, of what he wanted me to pray about on tonight. And tonight, he wanted me to pray specifically for mothers 
you know, mothers and son, but specifically for three, um, for three types of mothers tonight. Um, and specifically for mothers who have, who have wounded wounds. And when I talk about wounded wounds, I'm talking about wounded, uh, I'm talking about the wounds as far as the hearts. So wounded wounds, meaning that, you know, your sons have hurt you. And you may not even be talking to your sons right now. Mm. You may be at a point where they have so at a point of hurt you that you have literally walked away. You don't want to have anything else to do with them. And God is saying you need to reconcile that relationship, that it is not done, it is not over. Um, also, the, the woman that has the weary wound, um, that you, have, you are just tired, that you know, you have, you, you've been trying, You've been, you've been talking your head off. It feel like your son is just not listening to you. You've been going back and forth. You have gotten off the wall. And God is saying, get back on the wall. Even if you have to call another sister to help you climb back on the wall, God is saying, get back on the wall. And then the, the worry wound. You are not sleeping at night. You are pacing the floor. You are eating after death, or you are not eating at all. You are depressed, anxiety, and God is saying you need to cast all of that on him. And so I want to pray for those mothers on tonight, those mothers who are wounded, you are worrying, and you are weary. And I also want to pray for your sons. And so let's pray. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to pray on tonight, God. God, I thank you, Lord God, for who you are, God. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy, God. God, I thank you, God, for covering us, God. I thank you, God, for keeping us close to you, God. God, I thank you, Lord God, for an for opportunity, God, to come together, God, and talk about your goodness, God, to talk about, God, what you are doing, God, in the earth, God, what you are doing, God, in the relationships, God, with your sons, God, with your mothers, God, with your fathers, God. So God, on tonight, God, first of all, God, I lift up mothers before you, God. God, I lift up mothers before you, God, mothers that are wounded, God. Mothers, God, who are hurt, God, in the relationships with their sons, God. God, mothers who may have felt like that they needed to walk away, God, who feel like the relationships can't be reconciled, Lord God. I pray right now in the, right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will reconcile those relationships, God. Lord God, I pray right now, God, for those mothers, God, who have grown weary, God. God. Lord God, who feel like, God, that they are talking, Lord God, and that their words, God, that their words, God, are just hitting the ceiling, God, that their words, God, are going nowhere, God. Those mothers, God, who may be tired, God, and feel like they can't go any further, God. God, I pray, God, that you will send them the help, God. God, I pray, God, that they will seek out the help, God, and that they will not feel ashamed, God. Lord God, that they will seek wise counsel, God, and they will look for opportunities, God, and look for people, God, who will pour out, who will pour into them, God. Lord God, I pray, God, that they will seek you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I pray, God, for those, God, mothers who may be worried, God, those who may not be sleeping at night, God, those who may be pacing the floor, God, those, Lord God, who who may not be understanding what is going on, God, who may be worrying, God, and who may be feeling confused, God, and who may be feeling like they, they don't really understand what's going on with their sons, God. God, I pray that you would, give them, you would give them clarity like never before, God. So God, I pray that you will reconcile relationships on tonight, God. God, I pray for the son, God, who may be running in the street, God, that you will send him home, God. I pray that you will quicken him now like never before, God. That you will speak to him, God, wherever he is, God. God, that he will come running home, God. And that he will reconcile the relationship with his mother, God. So, God, I pray right now for our sons, God, and I lift up our sons before you, God. God, I pray that they will not be a statistic, God, to the system, God. God, I pray for their education, God, and I pray, God, that you will continue, God, Lord God, to pour into them like never before.
before, God. Lord God, I pray, God, that they will continue to grow like never before, God. God, I pray for their education, God, and their careers, God. God, I pray that they will be financially sound, God, and they will be healthy, God. God, I pray, God, that they will own land, God, and they will own houses, God, like never before, God. God, I pray for their relationship with you, God. Lord God, that they will study your word like never before, God, and they will grow closer to you, God. God, I pray for fathers, God. Lord God, that fathers will be that fathers will be in the home, God, and they will grow in their relationships with their sons, God. Lord God, that they will be the men that you have called them to be, God. So God, I pray, God, that what what, what you are doing, God, that people will come to know you like never before, God, and you will be glorified in the earth, God. So God, we thank you for who you are, God, and we give you all praise and all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you to the Ghost and family. Shoshana, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and y'all have a great night.